Hello folks. All right, so I'm underneath the trailer today. I'm leveling it. I'm gonna show you how I do this. It's quite technical, but you can save yourself a lot of money to get this trailer uh, re-leveled uh, at today's costs. Uh, we'd be looking at about $1,200, to $1,300. Uh, it's something that anybody can do, really. You just have to, uh, again, it's just hard work, just get underneath there. It's uh, not rocket science. It's something that, you know, anybody can do this work. And I'm going to show you how. So stick around. Well, there seems to be something interesting going on. Uh, so my neighbor is getting a new roof. And so the boys over there are just, uh, they've stripped the side of the roof and they're just unloading the, the truck there. You can see the boom there or not, but uh, yeah, they're getting ready for rain. We're finally getting some rain, so not the best thing if you're roofing. Anyway, so I'll show you how I got started here. So when you um, go to level up one of these mobile homes, you, you, uh, what I do is I, I try to find the high point, um, the highest point of the, of the mobile home, and I try to bring everything up to that. It's much easier to put shims in and bring it up than it is to try and take shims out and bring it down. So what we've done here is, um, you know, there's different ways that you can try and find that high point. But for me, I, I like to do it from the inside of the home. Now, you know, you can lay levels on the floor and, you know, try to figure out, you know, but by the time you move your level, keep moving it, moving it, you know, put by placing it on the floor, you know, you can get, there's a degree of error in that. Uh, also, you start to encounter different thicknesses of flooring, which can, you know, affect where your level is sitting as well. So, what I've done, uh, and this is the way I always start out, is I set my laser up. And so here I've got my laser set up again here. Uh, those of you that have been watching my, my videos have seen this little guy before. And so what this is doing now is it's projecting a level beam out uh, into the room that is, is level. So no matter, no matter where I turn this, um, you know, wherever that laser beam hits over there on the wall is going to be level. Uh, now you can get fancier laser levels. You know, this is a fairly simple one. You know, for a couple hundred bucks, you can buy this thing. And, uh, you know, you can have one for yourself and use it. You can use it for a lot of different things. Very handy to have. So, uh, I don't know if you can see the beam over there on the wall. Um, but there it is over there. So, basically what I've done is I've gone through the whole mobile home. And what I did was I put... I just scribed marks on the wall, just a, you know, with a marker. I just made a mark there that that is where the beam is level, okay, where it hits on the wall. And so, you know, I've, I've done that all the way through. And so, you know, here I have another, here I now have another one over here and, you know, another one in the corner. And I, I've just, I've just gone through the whole home that way and made marks. And then what I've done is, uh, Taking my, yeah, see here's another one over here. All right, now you can see there, I've written plus one half. You know what that means is I have to lift it up there a half an inch. So I'll take you to the back. In this home here, it just happens that our uh, high point is back here. So, you know, so this is way easier to do this um, you know, up on top instead of trying to crawl around there and to try and figure this out. So here I have found, this is my high point. So, um, which is, which is going to be zero. This is kind of hard to explain, but basically, uh, it's three, two and three quarters of difference between the high point and the low point. So you, all you do is you just take your tape measure and you measure. And so, you know, here we've got the different, it's 40, it's 40 two and three quarters roughly to that mark. And then if I go, yeah, there it's right there. So 42 and three quarters this is the measurement, okay. To that line from the floor. All right, it's kind of dark in here. And if I go to my lowest point, so then my lowest point will be um, the highest measure, the longest measurement that I get. 
So that was 42 and three quarter. You know, so I've gone through the home and I've, I've determined that, you know, this, this measurement here, for example, is, is 43 and a quarter. So that means the floor has to come up 42 and three quarters to, to, to 42 and three quarters. So it's got to come up a half an inch. All right. And so I have determined that my lowest point is right here, okay? And so if I measure from the floor to my line, that is uh, it's 45 and a quarter. So uh, the difference between 42 and three quarters and 45 and a quarter is two and three quarters of an inch. So this corner of the home has to come up two and three quarters of an inch. Now there's uh, other ways you can tell that your home is out of level, and this is this is one of them. Uh, when your doors don't stay where you put them. So for example, I've you know I moved all of the interior doors in here already, but uh, all of the doors were swinging. So you know when you open your door, if there's no wind or anything, it should stay put. But if we leave, leave this one go, okay, and you see how it goes back on its own. So that's indicating you know that everything is leaning this way that it wants to open a door that way. You may also notice if your home is out of level that you start to see some cracking if you've got drywall in it. Um, you will also may notice that your plumbing drains may be running slow. That's another symptom of it. Um, you know, there's uh, uh, things just work better if everything is level. So this home is basically sitting like this and down on that front corner. Now, the reason that that's probably like that you know we're we're uh, on hard ground at the back there where it's sitting but up here this is where it's it's low so that means that these cribs have sunken and the reason that these cribs have sunken so these this front ones so right above this area here is where that low part is uh so the that this this is sunken and the reason that this is probably sunken is because you can see all of our utilities come in here so you know we've got a water line coming in here uh, we've got a gas line coming in here as well and we've got telecom wires coming in here so when they install those services they just they just dig the trench and then they just backfill they don't usually compact so you know this is home has been here since you know 1984 1985 something like that and uh, you know so it's this has settled so what I find best is to sort of just leave everything be. Everything has probably settled in to where it's going to be now, you know, after 35 years, 36 years, whatever it is, 37 years. And so now if we don't disturb these cribs, these are called cribs, these things that this, that you, this pile of stuff that you see here. Um, if we uh, don't disturb them and instead, you know, shim up above, to bring this up so here we're gonna have to put two and three quarters of an inch of shims on top of this crib to get this up to level all right so the home sits on these cribs and there's different ways that the cribs are done and so here you can see you know we've got uh, cinder blocks now underneath here underneath this plastic is a, a concrete pad and so what they've done is they put this concrete pads all down all along the way and then they pulled the plastic over and then they set, started piling the crib up on top of that. So underneath here, there is a concrete pad, all right, that spreads the load underneath. And so what they've done on this one is they've used the combination of cinder blocks and wood cribs. So you can see the, the wood cribs. I'll, I'll get a little bit closer. Um, every, uh, so, and here you, then you finish it with wood to, you know, to get it to where you want it to be, you know, for the shim. All right, so let's just go a little further in here. So, you know, there's a specification how, how far these uh, cribs can be apart. And, you know, that we have to follow those. So, so basically in this home, it's 66 feet long and we've got uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight, eight sets of cribs. So they're, you know, roughly eight feet apart. And what they do here in our area is kind of every other one, they will run a, a beam from crib to crib to tie the cribs apart, just to keep them from spreading apart, you know, and toppling. 
and so here what they've done is underneath here we've got a concrete pad okay and then they just use timbers and and piled it up uh, like they have there now what happens is your steel beam sits on the cribs and and that's what supports it so here this is your support uh, for your steel beams on top of this is your two by eight floor joists and then your floor up above so when we level we're going to level to the bottom of this beam we're going to try and get this this beam right here level um, so that this is all level underneath here and then we don't worry too much there's going to be some discrepancies uh you know because it's wood and stuff up on top there there's some discrepancies in the in the in the iron and the metal you know those iron beams are not perfectly straight but um you know i find i found that uh that gets us i i aim for plus or minus an eighth of an inch which means i'm within a quarter of an inch you know which is uh perfectly acceptable okay now let's just take you a little further and show you one of these wood cribs <sighs> All right, so here's a wood crib. There's no concrete here at all. And you know, this is just uh, two by fours that are stacked crisscross. You can see how this is done. And again, you know, this crib is sitting on a little concrete pad, which is underneath this plastic. And so when we go to level this, now you can see originally when they uh, leveled the home, they, they used the wedge here. So you can see this wedged this wedge piece here, right there. And they just, you know, put that in there to bring it to level. As we're going through here, um, anything that's kind of misaligned, you know, I'll be, uh, I'll be straightening them up. This little pile of lumber here is to uh, hold the sewer pipe. It's just, a, it's just a, uh, a block here for the sewer pipe. It's got nothing to do with leveling, this thing here. Okay, it's just this crib, right? All right, so uh, I'll, I'll get set up here and we'll start we'll start lifting it up. I'll show you how I jack it up and, and uh, kind of go about this. All right, so what are we going to use for tools here? So the tools we're going to use uh, is this is how I lift the home. Um, is I just have a twenty. 20 ton hydraulic drop here that I use use for uh, you know lifting and then once I lift it you know then I slide in the shim that I need to get it to the to the uh, to the uh, place that I want it and uh, that's a that's a stubby jack that comes in quite handy for getting into the tight quarters underneath a mobile home and then I have uh, you know a pile of blocking here that I will be using to uh, block up and get my jack up closer to the frame of the mobile home and uh, the way I level, I use two levels. Um, I, you know, I use the, uh, this is the water level. And the way the water level works is, uh, you know, we have a reservoir here. We have a length of hose. And uh, at this end of the hose, I have a clamp, which clamps it. And basically, I'm not gonna unclamp this, but basically those, well, I'll show you. So basically the way this works is, um, we want to we want to get this this black line that I make made a mark on here will be at the bottom of the frame at the high point and then I can take this water level anywhere underneath the home and as long as I have the this bubble I don't know if you can see this little bubble in here that's moving up and down as long as I have that bubble lined up with that black mark I know that I am level with this. All right. So no matter where I take this end of the hose, you know, I've got, uh, I don't know, I've got about 50 feet of hose here on the ground, but wherever I take this, um, and I bring this, this line, I just move this up and down so that this little bubble goes up and down. It's not really a bubble. It's just a line. If when that, is lined up with that I know that I'm level so this is uh, water level is ancient technology this is the 
water levels the technology that they used to build the pyramids you know, thousands of years ago thousands of years old technology and it works you know perfectly well so contrast that to the modern way of doing things is you know whether we have our laser so I'll be using the laser as much as I can I prefer to use the laser but you know you can imagine that underneath there it's kind of hard to you know project your beam all over the place because of uh, you know all the stuff that's underneath there you know, there's a lot of obstacles underneath there it's, you have to be constantly moving your your laser every time you move a laser there's a chance uh, that you have a degree of error um, a couple things when you're using the water level you have to be sure that when you fill the hose of the water le level this is just tubing you know, this is nothing fancy it's just this is just a jug that I put some colored water in. I just I just use windshield washer antifreeze in there. That's all it is. Um, but then as you're filling your hose there, you know, and this is just a 5 16 inch clear hose. And uh, when you're filling it, you have to be sure that you don't get any air bubbles in it. If there's any air bubbles in it, uh, that will cause an air in your in your reading because the air will compress and it can give you a false reading on that little mark there. Uh, has to be full of water uh, you can't step on it you can't pinch it it's got to be laying freely uh, in order to get a proper measurement all right okay so I'm set up here I'm ready to start leveling and so this is my setup I've got my laser level set up here and I've got the water level set up back underneath the home there and I'll take you back there and show you how I've got that set up and uh, I've got my jack set up here ready to do my first lift now I kind of have a bit of a luxury here because I don't have any skirting so you know if you uh, have your skirting in place you know we're gonna replace all of our skirting here so it's gone but if you're doing this on a, on a home that uh, you know has skirting installed you know then you've got to do everything from underneath and inside you know which can turn this into a pretty big job if it's uh, especially if you've got a lot of stuff underneath there and, and if it's close you know if it's close to the ground but uh, you know no matter the basically the uh, you know the theory is the same of how we do this uh, it's just that you know instead of having this luxury of being able to work outside of the home like this then you know everything's gonna be done underneath so it's just gonna you know it increases the difficulty of it uh, you know plus it's dark underneath there when all the skirting's in and it's just you know kind of changes the dynamics of it quite a bit so I'm gonna take you underneath here all right so here i've got my water level set up and you can see i've got it sitting on these blocks here and what i've done is i have oh, bear with me folks so there is my where is it right there is my mark that's my level mark that's where I'm bringing everything to so we determined earlier that that mark was going to be the bottom of the frame all right you can see here's the frame up here it's you know it's lower than that the mark is lower than the frame and the reason for that is because you can see here this uh, is the main frame. It's three and a half inches lower than than this part of it. So, uh, and th and this the lower part goes along most of the way from front to back, except for the last little bit at the front and the back. So this being my point that I want to bring everything to, what I've done is I've measured down from the bottom of the of this frame here to that line three and a half inches, which is the thickness of this little piece of uh, frame here okay so that line uh, is is lining up with this bottom of the frame here all right i hope you understand that kind of hard to explain this all right so that's the setup and um so i've got my you know my my water level hose is you know snaked back and forth here it's all ready to go my laser is set up down there. Okay, if you can see it over there on the ground, in this way. Um, the beam is shooting underneath here. And so I'm gonna use the laser as much as I can 
because I, it's just it's easier to work with and it's more accurate but what I'm gonna do here now is I can go now to the uh, bottom of this piece of, of uh, frame here and I can see that my measurement is two and a quarter inches so that means that wherever I go here I want my measurement to be two and a quarter inches where my where my laser is okay if it reads two and a quarter inches it's that middle of the red dot it's two and a quarter then I know that I'm level all right so again bear with me folks so I'm set up down here to do my first lift so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing my laser over to this area here all right so I don't know if you can see it but it's on the block there and so I'm just gonna go past the block a bit to the left there and so now if I go underneath there And here you can see my setup and so these blocks are blocks that I've put in here to set my jack up on and uh, you may need a longer box depending on you know what the soil is like underneath if it's soft you, you know the blocks are going to push into the ground and then you'll have to uh, you know have longer blocks so they don't sink okay so if I come in here now and find my find my laser mark here there it is right there and that is reading uh, roughly an inch and a half uh not quite inch and five eighths so it's about between five eighths and three quarters of an inch that this has to go up to make it match the two and a quarter inch mark from at the other side over there so that means i'm gonna have to jack this thing up and then once i get a gap once I get a gap between here and here, this is where I'm gonna slide in the shim. So I have I have one ready to go here so that once I get up there, um, it's got, I'll be ready to slide it in there and it'll be then I'll be good. Again, I want my measurement plus or minus an uh, eighth of an inch. So I, I give myself a quarter of an inch leeway in a stick built house built on a concrete foundation. Um, you're, that's, that's within tolerance for that. Now I had a I had a viewer ask me uh, where do you start, like how do you know where to start, and so w what I've decided to do here is I'm I'm starting along this side. I'm going to get this side of the home all leveled first, and then I'll go to the other side and lift up the other side because it's the lowest. Um, what you'll find is that. Uh, if you start to jack this, like I'm going to start to jack this now, and as I'm jacking it up, uh, all of a sudden you may come to a point where it this doesn't want to go anymore, and you'll actually start to dimple the frame. It'll actually bend the frame. When you get to that point, then you slide in whatever shim that you can at that point, and then you go to the next point. So uh, it's kind of like torquing the wheel nuts on your car. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't go. You know do 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 you so you go there and then you go there and then you go there it's kind of the same thing here and uh that's an al analogy that my my engineer daughter suzanne came up with and uh when she was helping me level one of these one time and uh yeah it's a good analogy so you just can't necessarily go from crib to crib to crib you know you might have to go two down three down whatever and then come back um, it's just kind of the way it works. You, you, you kind of know like once you start to bend things then you'll you'll under you'll you'll feel that Okay, yeah, it's enough there Shim it to wherever it is uh, you wherever you stop there and then go to the next one and then come back All right, so I'm gonna set up here and I'll start um, Jacking this up All right, so Let's start jacking here and we'll see how this goes okay my blocks are pushing into the ground all right now I'm starting to lift okay my blocks are going back into the ground again okay I've got about a quarter of an inch there 
You hear a little bit of creaking. I'm almost there. Oh yeah, lots of creaking. Alright, so I'm there. Now I'm gonna put my shim in there that I've pre-cut. Okay, I'm go up a little bit more. Okay, I've got two pieces of lumber here that I want to bridge. Okay, you want to do this neatly. So you look professional. Okay, it always looks uh, better when you you know do things nice and neat all right so there i am you can see i've slid my shim in there okay and i'm gonna let it down all right bit of crunch there and i've got to put my laser back on So now I'll check this out, see what I got. Two and a quarter, exactly, right on the middle of my, uh, right on the middle of my uh, laser mark there. All right, so that's level. That point is good. We're done. So now all I do is just, I'll just go around, you know, each one like this. That's basically it. I'll just move all this now to another one and lift it up, and uh, you know, just kind of make the rounds. Um, you know, me by myself. I don't think I'll get this done in a day. It's I'm probably looking at two days, but again, you know, 12, 1300 bucks, uh, it's, it's easy money, you know, really. Uh, it gives you money to spend somewhere else, you know, where you can see it, like on cabinets or light fixtures or floor coverings. Uh, you know, down here, nobody sees this. Uh, but, you know, it's important because now, you know, before we start our new job, um, you know, everything's gonna be level. So when we install our new deck and we install our doors and windows and, you know, eventually our cabinets, uh, all of that stuff, it's all going to be nice and proper and, you know, level. All right, folks, um, when I get to one where I'm going to use the uh, water drill, I'll, I'll show you that one. All right, so um, I've got this side level. So I've gone along from, you know, from crib to crib here. And so we are now... We're now level from end to end on this side. And uh, I'll show you what's happening over here. So as I lifted up the front, um, I came off of this back crib here. You can see, I've, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a bit of a gap there now between the frame and that top shim there. Uh, but that's because uh, the other side is out of level as I level the other side It's gonna come up and it'll come back Come back to here. So I, I know this was good um, And it's just in the process of leveling It's the frame is twisted and it's lifted off of there But I know it was good. So it's gonna come back and rest on that. So now that I have this side level I've got to carry my level across to the other side so what I have done is I set my I set my uh, laser up here, and I'm shooting my laser beam across underneath from frame to frame. And so what I did is I took a measurement on this frame here, I went around the other side, and I've got it so it's level now from side to side. Okay. Now I will move my laser to the other side. And if you can do this with the laser, folks, it's much easier than the water level. The water level is kind of slow and kind of cumbersome. Um, you know, the laser is way to go. So, so now, on this side, I have got uh, I've got this that crib there. Okay. So I'll point at it. So that crib right there now is level with the one across the way from it. All right, so now I, I know that it's low on the front and I know it's low on the back. 
so now I will go from this point so so basically what I have here is now this this side of the home is like it's it's like arced okay so I'm high I'm here and this is level with the other side so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start bringing everything up to this level so I'll go down and I'll start with the last crib first on this side and then I'll get this all leveled and then I'll finish off over there when I get down to there um, there's gonna be quite a bit of shimming so as, as far as the shims go, I mean, you just use whatever whatever it takes. So I have little pieces of quarter inch plywood. I've got some three quarter inch one by four. I've got some wedges, uh, you know, just whatever whatever it takes um, to, to fill it up. You know, half inch plywood, five eighths plywood, three eighths plywood, three quarter plywood, you know, whatever, whatever it takes to fill up that space to make it level is, is what you use. All right, so I'm gonna get my uh, laser set up on this side now, and, and then I'm gonna carry, up, carry on down this way here. All right, so we've got it all leveled up now. Yeah, again, you know, we're plus or minus an eighth of an inch. So we, have, uh, you know, it's within a quarter of an inch. So plus or minus an eighth. And uh, I'm just gonna show you, I don't think I explained very well how these, you know, what we use to shim this. But basically, you know, once you get, once you get close, you know, with your, uh, to your level, then you just start putting in, you know, whatever it takes. And there's, you know, different ways uh that you can do this so um you know you just have to figure out what you need to you know to fill in the gap and then you know just come up with something to uh you know to fill that gap so you know it can be uh it could be a two by four you know to get your if it's an inch and a half you know it could be three eighths like this panels here are three eighths um you know i've got some quarter inch here uh, as well that i you know cut and used um you know there's a piece of three eighths osb that i use uh, here's a piece of half inch and so you just kind of you know mix and match to get to get it the way you want it um, Another thing that you can do is you can use these wedges and so these are flat wedges notice that you know It's the three and a half inches wide here um, And so then what you can do is uh, Slide these you know one on top of the other Let's make sure I'm in the frame here and then by um, well, Sit there for me so then you slide, you know, you slide these together and you can see as they, you know, the wedge comes together, you get more space in here. So, you know, if you need less space, you just pull it apart and, you know, that way you can really fine tune it and you just drive them in with your hammer. You know, so that's, that's another way that you can get your thickness. Uh, you don't want to use just one because you can see, um, you know, if this is, uh, you know, your, your beam sitting on top of it, you can see then if you just use the one, you have a gap whereas if you use the two you know you end up with a it's straight you know so you want to have it fully filled underneath your underneath your beam and uh, another thing you can do to check your levels is uh, you know when you're underneath there is you know just use a bubble level um, I'll show you on the end here so you know from from beam to beam so we have a beam here and this is where we uh, shim to was at the bottom of the beam and you have another one over here okay and then every so often underneath the home you have this angle iron this is two inch angle iron which we call stretchers that have been welded from you know from beam to beam so if you just take your bubble level and set it on here you know any place underneath there and if you're level side to side that's another way you can just check all right so the, the uh, water level I'm not a big fan of the water level to be honest with you um, you know it's uh, it's tedious it's slow to work um, and I always kind of feel you know, uh, you know there's too many things that can go wrong with the water level you know you get an air bubble in there uh, somehow you lose some liquid um, you know it's just there's there's a lot of things that can go wrong uh, it does work great uh, but you know it it's it's a uh, it's a bit of a process to use it it's slow um, wherever I can I'll use the I'll use the uh, laser level and uh, you know just uh, and the bubble level you know again you can see those stretchers going across from beam to beam so you know there's one there's one there okay We've got another one here so there's lots of those along the way that you can just double check with your bubble level you know use a four foot one 
Uh, I don't do any leveling on top of the floor. I just level on the bottom and I kind of don't worry about what happens up top. I will go up and you know just check put the bubble on the floor and just check this just see how we're coming along and make sure you know we're not too far out of whack but uh, you know the water level you know I've got the the reservoir sitting way at the back there I don't know if you can see it is a blue jug you know and so when you have this end of the water level then you can go you know all over the place and so it's just basically you know uh, this this mark here uh, you just go up and down so that this black mark then would line up with the bottom of this of the beam here so as I say I uh, didn't use it much at all here uh, the way it went uh, I feel that the laser is much more accurate I, I like to use that quite a bit more than the uh, than the water level but I just wanted to show you that how you know, kind of how that works and you know if you don't have the luxury of having your skirting off um, you know then it's uh, the bu bubble level will come a little bit more into play but you know even so you know you you can set your you can set your laser up in between the beams in the middle there and uh, it's pretty effective I, I've done that before uh, I've done that on a double white where you know you have to uh, get in the middle uh, and there's always you know you can always uh, I've always found I'm able to get my laser set up All right, and now that we've got it leveled up, you can see uh, that door there is sitting right where I put it. Uh, you know, before this door would, you know, swing in. I showed you that at the beginning of the video. We just like come right in like that. Now it's sitting there and it's because the, uh, you know, the floor is level. And uh, so that's an indication, you know, that we accomplished what we wanted to do. Um, this home was pretty out of level. Um, I'm gonna show you something interesting here this this corner back here was I lifted it up it ended up to be about two and a half inches that it came up and you know it has been that way for a while and so what happens is you know everything kind of just settles into being out of whack um, when I walk in here now I can feel it on the floor the floor feels much better now it doesn't have that slanty feel but uh, here's something that's interesting is uh, if you look at this now you can see um, how we've we've bulged the drywall here okay and that's because you know we we've, we've brought this we've brought that wall up that corner came up and of course you know it had to go somewhere and so what's happened is it's you know it's a buckle the drywall here um, you can also see here where on this crack here how this is opened up and so you know before there was uh, a strip on this a batten strip and at some point in time, people put wallpaper over it. Uh, and they did all that when it was crooked and saggy and out of level. And now we've leveled this up and you can see how this has opened up. Uh, what we're gonna do is eventually, you know, we're gonna tape that out. And, you know, I'll have to op cut this and open this up. And it's not a problem for us because, uh, you know, I'm gonna be taping and refinishing all of the walls. But it's something that you have to watch, you know, if you're in a finished home and you're going to do this, do this task that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a potential for, you know, something like this to happen. I also talked to somebody who uh, had a home that was very out of level. And uh, what they did was they, the doors were all pinching and uh, they, you know, they couldn't close their doors anymore. So they had somebody come in and fit the doors to the crooked frames and then they came back uh, at some point later and they decided they're going to level it and so then they leveled it and of course all those doors went back to level and now someone had trimmed the doors all off to being crooked and so now there was big gaps it was just it was a mess and they couldn't do anything about it because you know once you cut the door off it's gone you, know, you just can't can't fix that so anyways folks i hope that was helpful um you know, i just want to show you how you can do this uh it ended i ended up taking start to finish i i did it over two days but uh actual time in doing the leveling on this single wide um i was about six and a half hours on it so you know the quotes on this are you know 12 to 1300 dollars to uh, re-level a single wide 
uh, I've got there's somebody uh, doing a double wide down at the end of the street and they had someone give them a quote on releveling that one and it was eighteen hundred dollars to have without that double wide uh, releveled so um, that fellow I think has decided that he's gonna do it himself as well and uh, it's a pretty easy thing if you don't mind getting underneath and getting a little bit dirty um, yeah you can save yourself some money all right folks thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one bye bye all right just one more thing here before I before I go I didn't really explain how this little clamp thing works on the end of the hose so um, the reason that you have this clamp here is because uh, you, you need to pinch the tube off so that when you're moving it around that the that the liquid doesn't come out of the hose if you didn't have that you set it down on the ground you know you, you'd empty the hose out it would come out so what that clamp does is it stops it when you're going to take your reading you have to have the clamp loose it has to be undone so that the air can travel through the tube and allow the level of that liquid in there to settle out all right and so then it's just a matter of you know determining your level what you have to do is get this uh you know this uh the level of the liquid lined up with the line lined up with whatever you're leveling which in our case was the bottom of the beam and, and then it's done and then when you it's level uh, but then when you go uh you know to move it to the next one you want to squeeze this back down again so that when you lay the hose down it's not going to empty out of your, your liquid but in order to get your reading the, the tube has to be open so that the air can balance and uh bring your bring your uh, level you notice as I go up and down here now it's not moving uh, if I had this pinched off it would it would move I'm uh, uh, sorry not pinched off if I had open uh, that the level would drop all right so just wanted to clarify that all right bye bye folks